should a biological male have access to female spaces? Would that be a direct? That's part of the conversation, yeah. yeah. So to me, the obvious answer is no. Let's go up a level. Is the truth claim that I am Stacy accurate? Um, it, What would I have to do to become Stacy in your opinion? Tell me to call you Stacy. But that's why we have to differentiate between you feel like Stacy. What would I have to do to be female in your eyes? Um, that's why we need a new category because I'm perfectly willing to say that there is such a thing as <laughs> I, I already know that the community has completely rejected this idea. As a neophyte, I would have said, oh, trans woman. Like that works. I, get I have they, suggested that as an idea. Yeah. So for me, if that didn't have baggage, that would be, yeah, perfect. You're Stacy the trans woman. I'm totally here for that. I'm here for that too, but nobody's willing to go I, with that. I have a feeling that that probably represents the mainstream belief, but it's just very difficult to have this conversation. Okay. That's if, a guess. Okay, fine. Wrong. So if I am a trans woman, am I entitled to go in a female bathroom or compete in female sports? Bathrooms, I don't have a read on because that one feels like it gets complicated very fast. I've not, I have not thought through that, I don't know, but uh, for sure, not in female sports. Okay, cool, I agree. And I would say anywhere where you're going to be naked, not. Right. So any uh, prison where there's massive vulnerability, not. Yeah. So you basically believe that people should be called by the name that they wish to be called by, in an ideal world, we would have a category that describes them as not being the sex in which they were born, right? Yeah, I'm going to create a mental map huh. of you yeah. based on my experience with you and what you tell me is true. And so if you really, like uh, the first um, transgender person that I met, I, that, that I knowingly met, I was so surprised because I expected, and people forgive me and I'm showing my age and all of that, uh, but the when I f met somebody who was transgender for the first time, I didn't know transgender was a thing. I knew that transsexual was a thing, but I thought of them as like campy and over the top. And so I was expecting a drag queen. Mm. And I met this really like casual, down home, hair down, straight, no makeup, like woman <laughs> who, trans woman, who I was just like, oh, wow. Like I didn't, I immediately updated my mental map of what that could be and was like, oh, I literally had no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I was like, cool. My mental map of you is now that. Now she had not had her penis removed. So I was like, word, like mental map is that you are a male who feels entirely feminine. Well, that's where we started cool. with me saying that. Feels like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm so where the the line that I was trying to draw is, I think there's a reason for that, that occurs in the brain. And this is where the conversation to me, just like completely derails, is everybody is so talking as if they can't understand that there's another category. Now, I'm again, I may just be so new to this conversation that people have already had this, and that everyone's just going to completely reject the idea of, of that new category. Um, and in which case, then I'm at a loss and I'm not trying to convince anybody. Look, other if, than... if, if the trans ideology and trans activists said we would like to be called trans women and trans men to reflect the fact that we are of a certain biological sex, but we want to present to the world as uh, the opposite of that. I actually don't think anybody would have a problem with that beyond the, the specific narrow context which we've discussed. Mm. Uh, we wouldn't be having this conversation if that was acceptable to people at all. Yep. <clears throat> Can we come back to masculinity? Yeah, please. Because I think this is very interesting. Uh, I was once at a dinner, uh, a small dinner, it was about tw tw 12 of us maybe, with Jordan Peterson. Uh, and I asked him what Western civilization is. And Jordan, in, as is his style, went off on a 20 minute thing. And I was like, I have no fucking idea where you're God going, Jordan. Him. Right. But what he said was very interesting. He said that he talked about how in chimp groups the alpha male is quite often one of the smallest males in other words it's not a jocko wilnick mm. it's uh, me or i mean you're bigger than me but you know it's one of us and the reason for that is that the alpha male strategy the pub brawler strategy in groups does not work very well for very long you are only on top as long as you are physically the strongest male 
in that group. Uh, and, and when two or more smaller chimps can get together and kill you, they will. The difference with chimp groups is that the reason the smaller males are often the alpha male is that they're very good at building coalitions. And so to me, masculinity isn't about having big muscles or having a big head or wide fists or whatever. Uh, if we think about our conversation earlier about power, like I remember talking to Ben Shapiro about this and he was like, yeah, there's this guy on the internet who's like, yeah, I could, I could take off, got big muscles. And he was like, yeah, I could pay people to shoot you. That's the coalition thing, right? Power isn't projected through your fist in the modern world. It's projected through the power that you have over other people as a leader. So to me, uh, being hyper-masculine is not about having big muscles or having a big head. Um, it's about your ability to project power and authority. What kind of leader are you? Uh, and, you know, you mentioned other stuff like your level of aggression and all these, all these other things. So I think defining masculinity as simply a physical thing is, is very narrow. <clears throat> if you had to put people on a spectrum mm -hmm. of masculine, mm -hmm. who pegs out the meter? Is it Jocko Willink or is it Ben Shapiro? That's probably terrible because Jocko can build coalitions. Is it... Um, What's his name? The the fighter, the boxer. He has a show called The Gypsy King. Otherwise, I would not. Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury or Ben Shapiro. Who maxes out the masculinity meter? <sighs> hmm, that's interesting. I, I think I suspect on that level of analysis, everybody would say Tyson Fury. Yes, I would. You would. However, the, the, the question for me is um, the definition is what predetermines the outcome, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, that's so important. Yeah. Holy shit. I hope people pull that out. Yeah. Well, how you define so masculinity automatically defines who you think is masculine. Yeah. How right. You define and the question for me is what, which of those options would I like to be? I could go to the gym and become really big mm -hmm. and strong. I could do, and I did it for a while. Didn't, wasn't particularly my thing. I didn't enjoy it. I like being in shape. I don't like having, you know, going to the gym and lifting lots of weights. Oh, I get it. Didn't work for me. And the level of power that that gives you over the power in, in a healthy sense, influence over the world, being able to manifest the things that you want, etc., is minuscule compared to the power that you have by building groups of people who follow you into whatever battle or project or whatever it is you want to do. Um, and then there's the family aspect. How do you treat the women and children in your life? To me, healthy masculinity is a lot about that, actually. So when I see some guy with his shirt off and uh, big muscles talking about how he, you know, he's got 10 hoes or whatever, I, I, don't, I don't really see that as healthy masculinity. Agreed. Some people might do. And I'm sure the Genghis Khan model, which is basically that, some people would say, well, that's, you know, biologically, that is hyper-masculinity because like half the world or whatever is descended from him. Mm. That would have been a great example. Genghis Khan, yeah. not gigantic. No. But is he hyper masculine? Yeah, I yeah. would say so. To me, like, in fact, he pegs the fucking meter. Right. Kill them all. No problem. Just, we're taking over. We run this bitch now. Yeah. And actually, if you look historically, a lot of the leaders who really made a huge impact on human society, they've all been very small. Napoleon, Hitler, Stalin wasn't a big guy. Putin. Do you think that plays into it? Of course. I could see very easily how. Of course it does. It's like, oh, you think I'm not powerful because I'm smaller <laughs> than you? I will show you. I want to go back, speaking of that, yes. to alpha versus beta. Mm. So I think we have a delusional sense of what an alpha male is. Mm. I saw a documentary. I used to think an alpha male would be Tyson Fury. Not, I don't know him. He could be the smartest guy on planet Earth. Uh, but the sort of once removed thought of him as, as a fighter, a big, physically intimidating fighter. Um, I saw a documentary about wolves and I was shocked, shocked, I say, when I saw that the alpha male was small. Mm. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? And what I realized in that moment was the alpha is the decision maker. The alpha is the coalition builder. Mm -hmm. The alpha is the one that can think. Mm -hmm. Because again, in, in the marketplace of we are wolves, and if we don't take down that caribou, we fucking die. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you go, 
yeah, bro, that guy, I don't know how, but he knows where to go and he knows where to be and he gives me the look at just the right moment. And when I follow him, I eat. And when I don't, I don't. And so what ends up happening oftentimes is the alpha male is small, but fucking sharp. And the beta male, which in our society has gotten a terrible fucking rap, mm. is the enforcer. And it was watching that documentary was so unreal. So you've got a pack of whatever, six wolves, alpha kind of small, beta the biggest. Mm -hmm. And when they all went for the kill, the um, beta male came and told everyone to fuck off, mm. growled, mm. backed everybody down so the alpha could eat the liver. Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy shit, he's not even doing it for himself. Mm. He's, well, I mean, he is, he's protecting the alpha to make sure that the right person to make the decisions and all of that, that can keep the group together, whatever, whatever, is well taken care of, well fed, and has what he needs. So that really got me thinking. So. Yes, while I agree with you that the person who's going to have the outsized impact isn't necessarily going to be what I will call, quote unquote, the most masculine, mm. because again, all of us are 120 sided dice rolled. Mm -hmm. And so like, hey, maybe I'm as smart as Genghis Khan was, but I'm not vicious like that. Mm -hmm. Like I just, dude, like when I think about people getting <laughs> stabbed or I'm just like, oh God, mm. like clearly I'm not gonna be the guy that goes and takes over the planet. Uh, that shit just, I'm way too squeamish for that. <coughs> mm. So when I think about the thinking of something on a simplistic scale is probably the flaw in my thinking and that it's really a far more dimensional three dimensions. If we want to go all the way to four, it's like, you've got a tesseract of traits that makes for masculine, <clears throat> feminine, whatever, which I think leads to also some of the debate because it really is such a complex topic. If somebody can give you a hyper simplified version, I say I'm Stacy, therefore I'm Stacy. It's it has a lot of gravitational pull because it simplifies a very complicated idea. And sticking with the alpha conversation, who who was the alpha? Michael Jordan or Scottie Pippen? Scottie Pippen's a lot taller, a lot bigger. Yeah. Who was alpha? Obviously. Kobe or Shaq? Uh -huh. That's a good one. Right. What's really interesting in that one is they were both alpha and that was the problem. That's why they collided. They couldn't, neither could defer to the other. Yes. If Shaq had been the enforcer, they probably would have won 20 championships. Right, exactly. Um, but I think ultimately Kobe was the alpha in that situation and Shaq eventually, mm. you know, same with, uh, the, the, the lots of situations like that. Look, at, at that level, they're all alphas but someone's got to be the alpha in that particular group. Yeah, that's interesting. And how fast that happens. When you've been the best ball player in your every team, your middle school team, your high school team, your college team, and then you get to the NBA and you're like, oh shit, I'm like seventh or eighth in the pecking order. Yeah. It becomes a real question about, can you become a, a role player? A role player. Yeah, it's exactly right. right. And he, I forget who it was in um, I think it was 11 rings by Phil Jackson and Phil. I know you listen to this show. God, I wish I had doubt it very much. I so want to get him on. Mm -hmm. uh, He'd be incredible. Oh guess my for God. You. So we've gone out for years and years and years. And he's always like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just not during the basketball season or his team. He probably doesn't even fucking know. But, um, anyway, in the book, 11 rings, I'm almost certain it was in that, that I forget what player he had to approach, but he was like, you're a role player. And the guy actually could do it. He could mm. set his ego aside and be like, even though it might have been Stephen Carr. Like, Steve Kerr, maybe? Steve Kerr, Steve Kerr. Yeah, that you. makes sense. Uh, that even though he had to, like, he had always been the best of the best of the best of the best. He was like, yeah, no, that actually makes sense. Yeah. Cool, I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, when we think about these How things. How the fuck do you know an NBA reference? You're Russian. What's I'm going on I'm massively into NBA, a huge fan Are of the really? NBA. Yeah, Michael Jordan was my hero. It's one of the reasons the way we talk about race does my head in, because I was like, I was a kid. I didn't care who was black or white. I loved Michael Jordan mm. and I saw myself in him. It didn't matter to me what his skin color was. You know what I mean? That's why divisiveness about race bothers me so much. Uh, but yeah, the NBA, uh, was, you know, I love basketball. It's a great sport, great sport. And uh, a lot of my heroes kind of watching, mm. growing up, watching those, those guys. Uh, and sport is beautiful because it's, it's ritualized combat, and so it teaches you a lot about human dynamics and tribe dynamics and, you know, 
different tribes fighting each other and how you marshal that and who has to run the whole thing. I mean, if you think about, you, you know, sticking with Alpha conversation, it's not quite true anymore. But historically speaking, the point guard, the smallest player, would usually be the one running the whole show. Mm. That's the role of the point guard. Um, so I think um, our conversation... And also, you know, who's going to be sending Jocker Wilnick into battle? Someone's going to be telling him where to go and who to kill. Unless I can get him to run for president. <laughs> well, go for it. Yeah, yeah. I remember last cycle, that was one of the options um, that... You know Brett Weinstein, right? Yeah. So he put that, I, uh, I forget what it was called, Freedom Party 2020. No. Or, I forget what it was called. Something, something, 2020. Uh, and yeah, I really, it was Jocko and somebody else. And I was like, yeah, I'd vote for that. <clears throat> I would vote for that. Yeah. But alas. If you like that clip, check out another powerful clip right here. And I'll see you there.